So I just went to edit that section of video that I just made where I told you about my new company. Well, actually it's not new, but very small company, Multimation Design. You can contact me at multimationdesign at gmail.com. And I went in and you can see how the chain, it falls down into this hole. And if you go back around to the side, like we already started this video on, you can see how it's all wonky down below. So definitely need to hold that up somehow better. Otherwise, if you don't have this cover off like I do, I don't know if you would know if it was on there properly or not. So when you take it apart, you better pull up super hard and keep pulling up. Don't let any slack down else you'll end up like this. So let's get over there and um, try to get these camshafts back on. So for now, until I get my fancy tool made, which I don't know if I'm going to make, I just zip tied it up here and I pulled this side tighter. So since there's some slop in the zip tie, I'm able to go like this. Your bike won't probably be turned up like this unless you have one of these ABBA stands that will be more level. And if you watch some of the previous videos, you'll see why I had to go through this, mainly because this fell off. And I wanted to take this cover off anyways, just to see what it looked like underneath. While I insert the dowel pin. There we go, it's this way, like that. That's the cam chain tensioner putting the tension on the chain. So it's fitting on the sprocket very well down below and got this running up good and it's running on the other side very good very well actually now if we go up to the top side looks like we're ready to try to put the camshafts in so I have these safely under these rags to keep them clean there's the camshaft caps and over here's the camshafts this is the reason I made this whole series of videos because this is very sparse in the manual, installing the camshafts. I have a huge video on how to line everything up on 125 degrees before top dead center. And that's where it is right now. So this is the whole reason I'm making this video because all they tell us in the manual is install the exhaust camshaft one and the intake camshaft two. They don't say anything about how the valves are pushing up on you funny and keep the chain tight and all the stuff I've been going through. I did go over this next part. Make sure the punch mark A on each camshaft faces up when installing the camshaft. No need to align the mark B on the camshaft sprocket. On some other engines, there's lines on these sprockets and you line them up with the cylinder head, but we don't do that. All we care about, and you can watch the other video, is that this dot doesn't really show it in here because the caps aren't on, but this dot has to line up with the caps. So I've read through a lot of forums and there's a lot of confusion about this. Basically all that matters is that mark A on the generator rotor cover lines up with the generator cover mark B. And I did a whole video on finding 125 degrees before dot top dead center. So that hasn't changed. So as long as you line up the dots on the camshafts with the lines on the cam caps, you'll be good. So just for review on this exhaust cam cap, there's an arrow pointing to the left. And here's the line that you want to line up with the dot. Here's the dot. Actually, it's not that. It's this dot here. That's some kind of an oil port because that's where the bearing goes. And on the intake side, it's the same. It's got the arrow and an eye for intake. And it's got the line. And if you grab the intake camshaft and you spin it to find the dot right here. So these are the three areas that the bearings right on there, there, and there. Actually, there's another one here. That's because this cam cap has two places for bearings. Well, actually, these have two here, so there should be four. One, two, three, four. 
when I lay them in there, I'm not going to worry about intake or exhaust at this point. It does say to do the exhaust first, but that has something to do with getting this chain lined up. So here's the intake. Make sure the bearings are lined up. So anyway, here's the bearing surfaces I showed you. That needs to line up here, 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 and here. Got to keep my hands out of the way. So I'm going to be real careful. I don't want to scratch anything. I'm just going to set it there, and I'm going to find the dot in a minute. I'll temporarily move this chain over to here. That's probably a reason that jig might not work. There'd be a lot of thought involved. So here comes the exhaust. So I have this labeled, and I'm going to cut the tag off. Now, if you forget which is which, and I had someone post a question in the comments, and I mentioned this in the other video, but you can measure this lobe height with a caliper. And the exhaust is 20 thousandths larger. You can look in the manual. Yeah, so this height is different. So on this one, I'm actually going to make sure this dot is up first. I can spin it later. So like I said, these are the oil holes. So I'm going to put that dot up right there. Try to be careful. There we go. So since that crank is 125 degrees before top dead center, they do that instead of top dead center because when you have these lobes, that are 120 degrees offset, these cam lobes, when you lay it in there, it actually kind of just falls into a natural position. And you notice if I turn this sprocket, if you look to the right of the screen, you can see how it just rides up. You can see that cam where it's on the valve. So see how it just falls where it goes. So what makes it hard, and if you watch the other video, is this dot here, it actually needs to be rotated back just a little bit like this and you can see how this rides up. So we're going to have to get the chain on the proper tooth and account for just that little bit of movement. If you look at the intake one, if you watch that other video, I'm spinning with my fingers here and it lays in almost perfectly. I don't know why this exhaust would be off just a hair. Maybe it's just the way it is. So let's continue on, and we need to get these cam caps on. So in one of my previous videos, I decided or said I was going to find a better way than zip ties. So I just laid this exhaust cam in like I showed you, and you can see the chain stuck up under here. So I was thinking, and I don't know if I'm going to do this now, maybe if you had bungee cords here instead of zip ties up here. But for now, I'm going to try to wrap up this video, and then on the next video, I'm going to get the cam caps on, but I want to get this chain on just for, to see if I can do it. There is a little slop in my zip tie. So my zip ties are too tight right now to get it on here. So let me see what I'm going to do next. So what I'm talking about is I can't get this chain over this nut. And if I lift the camshaft up, and try to get it on, there's too much tension in the zip ties. So the problem would be if you had that cover off and you couldn't, or if you had the cover on and you couldn't see what's going on down below, like I showed you on the crankshaft, you need to keep this tension on here and get these installed. So at this point, I'm just going to uh, cut my zip ties. And since I have the bottom open, I can see what's going on. So I'm just going to hold it with my fingers for now and cut the zip ties from the other side.
All right, so the zip ties are off. I'm watching down below, and if you let this go like this, I can see it, it's almost falling off the gear, but if you move it about a half an inch, it still stays on. So you probably have about that much wiggle room before it gets messed up. Let's look over on this side. If I, It's not as bad on the exhaust side. So I'm holding the tension up with my fingers. Now I'm gonna to try to get this chain over here with the dot pointing up at it. Like I said, it kind of just stays where it wants to go. If See how I wiggle it? It just rides up. So if I grab it, I would say put the chain on maybe. That way you could hold the tension. The book does say install the exhaust side first. That's what I'm doing. And I'm watching the dot. Okay, that looks pretty tight across here. Hasn't fallen off down below, but it's nice to be able to look. So now I'm gonna to try to get the intake side on. Like I said, I kinda, of, I'm trying to hold up and get, get it on the gear. And trying to keep tension up and then drop it back down. So something's off, it's off one tooth or something because it's not falling in. So at this point, you can see it's all wonky. If I tried to tighten these caps down, see they both wiggle funny. So the dot on the exhaust that should be pointing straight up like it would be right here is actually rotated a little bit down. And the intake side over here, it should be there but it's rotated back so i'm gonna have to try to mess with the chain a little bit and get those pointed straight up so i'm gonna need to rotate this sprocket this way one tooth so i'm gonna have to be pulling up here so i don't lose my tension and at the same time get this to rotate one tooth which means I'm probably gonna to have to take it off of here. Just a little bit. Yeah, what a mess. This thing just falls down on you. So there's gotta be an easier way. One forum guy said he just messed with it and I'm glad I have that cover off, like I said, because I can tell what's going on. So it looks like I'm close. I got it one tooth. Go ahead and get it to go over on the other one. See how it's really easy to drop it. So this is interesting when I push down here and I reach around with my other hand and I push where the cam chain tensioner would be. You can see how it takes the slack out. Now, if you go back and you look here, there's the dot. It looks like it's sitting straight up. There's the other dot, it's sitting straight up. If you go back down here, this is why it's nice to have this cover off. So I've got some kind of a kink there. And if I push this guide up, actually look how it took the slack out. That's a good sign. If you watch one of my previous videos, I call it a reality check for the camshaft orientations. And when I took this cam cap off, this little dot rotated towards us like this. Now this is interesting. If I went to go to tighten this down, and I, you can see how it rocks a little bit. So when you tighten it down, it's gonna to have to push that valve a little bit. You tighten it there. That's why when I loosen that cam cap, if you watch that video, it, it went like this just a little bit. So it's not as bad as I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause that for now and then I'll come back and get the cam caps on.